Free BSD reviews, tutorials and gaming. Now we're having a look now at the uh, third release candidate of Project Trident, which is the spiritual successor of TrueOS with Lumina as its desktop. Uh, this is, like I said, the third release candidate. Um, there are a few things um, that need to be tweaked, but overall, I think it looks good so far uh, because it's a third release candidate. It's probably not going to change that much before it gets um, the official release. Uh, but we'll have a look to see what we can see. This is not going to be an in-depth review. Um, this is just going to be a quick uh, summary. I mean, I have made in previous videos the case that I do like TrueOS and uh, Lumina. I've even run Lumina on my FreeBSD uh, vanilla desktop. And it's something that I really respect and understand that they're trying to achieve something different. Not everybody likes it. Some people absolutely vehemently uh, dislike it with a passion. Uh, but I, I like it. I think it's 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 trying to be different from the um, usual crowd uh, that is at the moment inhabiting the desktop scene within the Linux community. And this being FreeBSD based, well, it gives it extra spice. Right, this is what it boots up to. The wallpaper has um, got a five minute rotation for random wallpaper, so it will um, continuously change. Just in case you wonder what's going on. <laughs> the video that you'll be watching has been edited, but it will be edited to the point where suddenly the wallpaper changes. Right, okay. On the desktop, this is what you've got. It's pretty much the same as it has been in previous years uh, and in previous versions. I think one noticeable difference is you've got Falcon as I think the default browser now. It's very nice, it's Falcon. Right, and Trojita or Trojita as your email client. Telegram desktop, VLC, uh, the Lumina theme uh, application, which has always been there, App Cafe desktop configuration and the control panel so everything is pretty much as it used to be um, so that looks good so far right we'll have a look at what's included in the menu like I say in previous videos I don't normally include um, or I don't normally pay much attention to the install applications but in this instance like GhostBSD it's sold as a complete package and so we'll have a look to what is being given out of the box as it were. <coughs> right. Right. You can add, you know, most aware that the Lumina desktop can be uh, accessed using the almost Windows 95 ish um, central start button, or you can right click on the desktop because it uses Fluxbox as its underpinning um, engine as it were the right clicking on the desktop works like Fluxbox would or Openbox. I think I'll prefer to use that. Um, some people do like this and I don't mind this. I understand where they were coming from. Uh, this is the perhaps most used files and places that you might want to um, browse. But it can be cumbersome and it does put a lot of people off. So if I actually just use a right click then it may become more it may be more uh, palatable. So you got your terminal, your browse files and applications, home, root, preferences, uh, lock session, uh, desktop actions, and obviously log out. So the terminal will open up the terminal as expected. Now it's an unusual looking terminal, and as you can see, it's Qt terminal. Looks very similar to um, Rock's term. So if anyone uses the Rocks Filer, um, when you know Rocks Filer file management application on FreeBSD or Linux, you'll know that there is a, a sister application called Rocks Term, which is meant to fit very um, well with it. That looks very much like Rocks Term. So you got the usual, um, you know, 
different app, you know, different ways of manipulating text and clearing text and etc. Let's have a look at the file structure. I'm always interested in looking at that. Okay, you see, at the moment, you see it's used the uh, ZFS. I oh, see it's also installed jails, which is pretty good. The ZFS um, system. So memory consume is uh, is not oh, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's using ZFS. Uh, by default, it was installed, but the actual memory usage is not so bad. At the moment, there's 175 megabytes that is uh, used, with 191 cached away. Not too bad. But like I say, the file structure, uh, jails, yeah, very good. I like that. It's already set up, I should imagine. And yeah, I can tell by because it's uh, Trident forward slash user home. And that's the, the ZFS partitioning. So you got that, that's very good. Uh, do not ask again, do you want to exit? Oh, you see it's changed wallpaper already. Uh, browse files, opens up the Insight file browser. It's a little bit slow. And yeah, I mean that's, that's as it's always been. There's nothing unusual there. Is a little bit sluggish, but you know because it's a release candidate, uh, because it's a release candidate, we'll uh, we'll get cut you some slack. Okay, that's good. Uh, applications, the home. You see, and also this particular way of doing it gives you the home directory plus its subdirectory, so you can go straight to it if you wish, and open it. Because we've just installed it, there should nothing be. Uh, there shouldn't be anything in there. Very slow. Uh, the applications. Well, you can manage the application. I imagine you can install and uninstall. Control panel. Uh, development. You've got Lumina text editor, Qt5 assistant, Qt5 designer and linguist. Graphics. You've got Lumina PDF viewer, Lumina screenshot and photo, and photo tonic. Uh, you've got Lumina Media Player, Pandora, Internet Radio and VLC Player. Now I remember I saw one review recently looking at uh, Lumina and um, TrueOS and it was an earlier version we were saying well why wasn't the Pandora Internet Radio in the uh, the multimedia part, I think it was in the utilities. Uh, well I think that criticism was listened to and uh, someone's moved it into the uh, multimedia part which is good. You've got VLC of course, uh, Falcon Telegram and Trojita. Got Cat Office where you've got um, oh, do you mean Sorry. applications? It's very laggy. Office, you've only got Calculator uh, installed, which I mean that's fine. It's a, it's a nice looking calculator, but there's no Office applications other than that, which is unusual. There's not even um, LibreOffice. Okay. Settings, um, you've got the App Cafe, Desktop Configuration, Device Manager, Login Manager, Lumina Screen Configuration, Lumina Theme Engine, Mouse Configuration, Screen Saver, Service Manager, Task Manager, User Configuration, X Screen Saver Blank, Lock, Start and Stop. Uh, system, you've got Community Support, Desktop Information, Managing Printing, Q Terminal, and Q Terminal drop down. So you've got Q Terminal. And drop down terminal, and underneath that you got Q terminal drop down. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Disappeared. Right. That just. Right. Okay. Oh, I see. Right. Do I go to the top there? No. I've not noticed that before. A little thing at the top. So where did my terminal go? Hmm. Okay. We'll try again. Uh, just a little there. Q terminal. Right, there's Q terminal. And we'll go to uh, Q terminal drop down. It's interesting. Ah, now see what's interesting now. 
and now it's gone. Right, okay, that's very strange. But we'll try one more time. Um, we'll do the Q terminal, we'll drop down and drop down. Right. But there's no bar to grab it. Okay. Well, anyway, very strange. Some perhaps a little bug that needs to be ironed out. A little repetition and a bug there. Applications again. And system. Doo -doo -doo. And then we've got Compton, Control Manager, Insight, File Manager, Lumina Archiver, File Information, Search, Network Manager, Sysadmin, Client, Truos, Mixer Tray, and Network Tray. Let's have a look at the Network Tray. Ah, oh, but it's already down there anyway. Yeah, so it's basically you got everything that it was on before. Um, there's one or two additions, one or two still mix ups. But because it's a release candidate and they can still fix that before release, that that's okay. Let's have a look at App Cafe and see if we can install LibreOffice. Uh, as with previous versions of um, App Cafe, it's still got the TrueOS branding. Uh, you can choose the predefined uh, segments. If we go into Office Suites, because we're after LibreOffice, and LibreOffice is at the top. Well, that's fine. Let's go at that. Oh, by the way, there isn't um, virtual box uh, additions. I don't know if it's loaded or if it's not working, but um, the screen resolution is a little bit off, but we'll leave it at that. I'm not bothered. Just for showing purposes of this release candidate. Right, so we'll get back. LibreOffice is there. If you press that to um, install the package. Are you sure you want to install these? Yep. Uh, 102 megabytes. That's fine. And just to check whether it's downloading. Hopefully it is. Do do do. Action. Uh, okay. Well, it's downloading. One of 44. Now, there's a lot of people who don't like. Um, Lumina. And it does take some getting used to, and that's for true, that's for sure. And because that was the face presented by TrueOS as its default desktop, I think it was created specifically for TrueOS and then ported to FreeBSD quite easily and then ported further on down to uh, Linux, that a lot of people would judge TrueOS on that. And uh, I suppose that's a fair criticism. Uh, they are basically intertwined with each other. Uh, but because, I don't know, in a combination of uh, newness, strangeness, uh, inexperience in using, and perhaps uh, a few quirks in the fact that uh, Lumina sits upon Fluxbox and sometimes um, the window decorations didn't show, uh, and therefore leaving you unable to uh, move a window around or close it properly, led some people to uh, ooh, really go off Lumina and as such true OS and to a certain extent I can understand why but it was a little bit unfair um, because they were trying to achieve something different in a sea of sameness really they didn't want to go down the route of KDE or GNOME or anything like that they wanted um, a proper workable workstation um, experience, a functional experience, one that you can get on and do some work with rather than just looking at the pretty pictures. And they did achieve that, but it was at a cost of people thinking, oh, what is this? Almost the same reaction as when people move from Windows 3.11 to uh, Windows 95, uh, and then from the Windows 95 paradigm to uh, Windows 8. It was a, a fundamental shift. So it does take time to call, you know, to people to get used to it. But anyway, hopefully that's installed, it's been finished. And if we go to I see one criticism I also saw in another video, and which is fair enough, it installs everything automatically that you install to the desktop as a shortcut. Um, that is annoying. I'm not sure if you can turn that off. Well desktop settings, let's have a look. Effects. 
possibly not. So I've just clicked on applications and nothing is happening. There's a certain amount of screen tearing and it looks like it's frozen a bit. Hmm. Well that's not good. Oh, there we go. Very slow. Web browser, Falcon Trahita, File Manager, Advanced. Can we... Yeah, there might be an option there, but I'm not going to bother. Right, okay. We'll double click on... Uh, we'll start LibreOffice. Well, that's quite speedy. Remember, it's running in a virtual box and we've got ZFS going. Yep, not too bad. For those who are interested, the version is 6.0.5.2. Uh, I'm not sure what the latest version is. I'm just going to bring it up on the computer. Well, the latest version is 6.1.3, so we're a little behind. Um, how far behind are we? Oh, well, you know, a little bit behind. But that's okay. It will still do what you need it to do. And I'm not really hung up on numbers anyway, it's just for those who might want to know. So, yeah, okay. Apart from the, um, there's one or two little inconsistencies, one or two little bugs. There's nothing show-stopping, I think. Um, it does need a little bit of tweaking. Uh, better integration with VirtualBox, I think. For the cost, you know... All right. Um, it needs to be installed on real hardware with the drivers going from NVIDIA or uh, the such like. But most people will encounter this first uh, as a virtual box um, installation. So if they could get that going, get it in there properly, uh, like a lot of Ghost BSD has, they, they've integrated it quite well. Then I think the experience will be uh, a lot nicer and the reviews will be more happier. So, um, yeah. I can't think of anything else I need to cover. There's just a basic rundown, a very, a very quick rundown. Office, blah, 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 blah. yeah, okay, that's fine. I'll just have a look at the preferences uh, for those who might want to be interested in, in uh, finding. Uh, theme, display, wallpaper, screen server, nah. control panel, Lumino about, let's version. It's 1.4.2, I think, is the is the latest. So that's fine. And then this is just a quick look at uh, where we are on release candidate 3 of um, Project Trident or Trident OS. I think they're going to go with that as the, the final name probably, Trident OS. Yeah, it's fine. It's something to keep look forward to. And when it's actually officially released, I'll do a, I'll install it onto um, some real hardware. I've got a hard drive ready that I can install it to. And once that's done, I'll give you an in-depth review. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.